Good morning. Let's have our choir come. welcome you today to Tri-State Baptist Temple. We encourage you to take a hymn book and find hymn number 55, hymn 55, and we'll stand together and sing when the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection chair. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Amen. We are glad that you're here today, and we hope that's true in your life, that you know Jesus Christ, your Savior, so that when he comes and he calls for his own, that you'll be a part of them that will go and meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're thankful uh, for a great day, excited to uh, meet together. I'm excited to hear a, a a message from God's Word today. I hope you are too. If we want to pray together and just ask the Lord to bless our service and uh, bless our time together. Josh, will you pray for us, please? Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated and we will listen to our choir. 
Amen. Our choir is going to come down. We invite you to stand and we'll greet one another again this morning. sit down. We're going to sing a new, a new chorus today. We sang it as we opened up the service. If you don't know the words, they're on the back of your bulletin. And we're going to sing this new chorus over the next several services. We hope you'll learn it. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. So if you have a bulletin, you find it. And we're going to sing it together. Just a moment. Say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Thank you so much. You could be seated, and we are so glad you're here today at Tri-State Baptist Temple. We're excited about this time of the year, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to Pastor's new uh, sermon series that he's going to be uh, preaching and uh, thinking about uh, the holiday season this time of the year. And so I hope you've come today just expecting to hear from the Lord and excited about uh, what the Lord will do in your own heart and your own life. And so we're uh, excited about the day. We want to remind you about some of the things that are going on in the life of our church church. I think our uh, next ladies Bible study is tomorrow. Is that here on the church property? So here I want to invite our ladies to come and be a part of the next ladies Bible study. Uh, it'll be an encouragement to you and hope you'll come and be a part of that. And so don't forget about those things. And then we're, uh, as we are getting closer to Thanksgiving, we want to remind you that the week of Thanksgiving, our schedule changes a little bit. We do not meet on Wednesday night. Uh, the week of Thanksgiving, but rather we'll have our service on Tuesday uh, night at 7 o'clock. Uh, there will not be uh, children's ministries or youth ministries meeting over uh, on, on those parts of the property, but everybody will meet together. No, I always say it wrong. I say it here, but everybody will meet together in the ministry center, and uh, we're going to have our pie and praise service, and so uh, we want to encourage you to be here and be a part of that. 
uh, for on the Tuesday of Thanksgiving. So don't forget about that schedule change, and uh, we're excited about uh, that'll be a fun day and good time. Uh, we want to remind you about uh, our missions meeting we had this year. It was a great uh, weekend, and we just saw the Lord uh, encourage us through uh, Dr. Shumper and through the missionary families that were here. And, uh, of course, during our mission meetings, the time of the year, we always uh, collect our 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 mission uh, uh, offering uh, uh, cards, and we want to encourage you, if you have not done that yet, uh, to turn in your missionary uh, uh, offering card, and uh, if you'll, if there are some in the pews throughout uh, the sanctuary, and if you haven't turned yours in yet, we, you can get one, and the way we do it is just a, uh, just a Rip it here on the edge. You have this part that you can keep for yourself, and then the big part is what you turn in, uh, and it'll just let us know uh, what you're planning on giving each month uh, for our missions offering throughout the coming year. And uh, we're excited about uh, how uh, the Lord has already worked, and I think uh, we have 23 cards that have been turned in, so 23 different cards have come in uh, from families in our church, and I think we've got $2,900 that have been committed uh, to give towards missions throughout the year, and so that's a great blessing, and uh, it's an encouraging. If you've never participated, uh, we want to remind you, and pastors has helped us to see this, that if one family would just give $50 a month uh, to missions, then that would allow us to, to support a new missionary family on a monthly basis. Most of our missionaries that we support, we support them by giving them $50 a month, and uh, it helps them as they continue all around the world. And uh, we've been looking at all of our missionaries that we have on our display boards and just be reminded about where they are going. We uh, were so thankful to meet the two families, uh, the Midkiffs and the Grant family, uh, during our conference that we don't support yet, and we would love to support them. And, and uh, so uh, if a family gave $50, that would, be a, that would support one of those new missionaries. And so uh, we want to encourage you to think about that, and we want to encourage encourage everyone who's a part of the Tri-State Baptist Temple uh, to pray and to give uh, towards missionary uh, work around the world, and uh, we want to encourage you to be a part of that. So uh, if you have not yet had the opportunity to turn in your mission card, uh, you can do that today. We encourage you to do that. Again, you uh, on uh, you write the uh, amount that you're planning on giving for the month just in the box. Remember, there's no place for a name. We're not asking for your name. We don't want to know who's uh, what you're giving. That's between you and the Lord, but that communication helps us to know uh, what we can do as a church, and uh, so we want to encourage you to do that. And then your reminder is so you can put uh, the amount you've uh, promised uh, through the, your through prayer. Uh, you can put that somewhere in your home where you can be reminded of it. You can be praying about it each month. It'll remind you to pray for our missionaries and remind you to uh, just trust the Lord to provide those things. So uh, we want to encourage you and, and remind you about that as well. Uh, but it's been a, a good day, and uh, we're looking forward to it. On Friday, we're going to take our teenagers uh, on an activity. We're going to go bowling and just have a good time together. So we want to encourage you, if you have anyone here that are in our youth group, uh, sixth grade and up to come and be a part of that activity on Friday and uh, we'll give them more information again on Wednesday uh, but we're looking forward to that and just excited about all the things that are going on we have choir practice tonight at five o'clock for our choir don't forget about that as well and uh, we're thankful for uh, just the chance to serve the Lord together well we'll ask our men to come this time we'll take up our tithes offering faith promise missions offering Amen. Let's pray together.
Bill, thank you. Appreciate the choir doing a good job and the orchestra. Enjoy the new chorus that we'll learn together that we sang. It's very fitting for this time of the year, and we certainly are getting ready to get into a very busy time, and uh, we're getting closer and closer to the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, this coming Wednesday night is our Bible Club Thanksgiving dinner that we have for all the boys and girls in our Bible Club, and we did this uh, uh Started it here years ago. We did it at the church we pastored in Tennessee. We found out a lot of the boys and girls we brought to church on buses and vans really never had a Thanksgiving dinner with their family, never sat down around a table. And the things we take the granted for granted that we uh, do each year, they never do those things. And so uh, we decided we're going to do that for them. And so we just scoop the tables all together and set them all around it and and uh, we bring in a real Thanksgiving dinner, and they just enjoy it, and it's just a great uh, uh, night for us, for our Bible club. That's this coming uh, Wednesday evening, and many of you signed up to bring in food, and if you did, we are thankful for that. And uh, if you can, have it here just a little after 6, and uh, we'll be able to get it all sorted out and get things ready. If you want to lend a hand uh, Wednesday night, I know that that's always helpful as well. Uh, to have some extra hands uh, because there's a lot of boys and girls and once they've ate that first plate they want some maybe some more mashed potatoes and some more gravy and and it takes a lot of people to keep them all fed so if you want to help out you can and that's always a fun night the children look forward to it be a blessing to them and then next week Evan mentioned our pie and pray service he can come to the auditorium I'm going to where the pie's at and that's going to be over in the ministry center and uh, so you bring in your favorite pie. I, I, had a, I, I just thought to tell people this morning in, some, in our Building with the Bible Hour class that a fried pie equates the same as a regular pie. And uh, you know what I'm talking about, those fry pies, like you get in the Amish country. There's an Amish bakery in Ironton now, you know that. They have them, they make them. So I'm just saying if you wanted to bring in a few, uh, that they would work all right. They, we wouldn't throw them out or disqualify them. Uh, so it's a good night. You bring in your favorite pie, fruit pies. I like fruit pies, cream pies, uh, just any kind. You, you just bring them in and we'll enjoy it. We're going to have some praise time together, give you an opportunity if you want to. We don't force anyone to do anything. You can just sit and enjoy pie and coffee and be blessed as others uh, share. But uh, we'll have a night just for that. That'll be Tuesday evening, uh, the week of Thanksgiving. We won't have Wednesday evening services that week. Then right on in uh, toward the busy Christmas time, our choir is rehearsing for their program now on Sunday evenings as well as the children. Uh, any children, boys and girls that want to be in the Christmas program, they just need to be here tonight at 6 and then be faithfully in their rehearsals on Sunday nights between now and the program. And uh, I, it'll be a blessing. They'll never forget being in a Christmas program. And uh, so that'll be a fun, uh, fun night. Uh, fun thing for them to do and uh, we hope you'll uh, bring them out and just be in the services on Sunday evening. Well we are going to uh, continue uh, looking at a new thought that we have, a new sermon series we've started and uh, we will be looking at this over a few weeks as we get a little bit closer to Christmas. I have something special uh, that we'll uh, look at as far as uh, some sermons leading right up until Christmas about the birth of Christ and some of the things that uh, took place at that time, but we're looking at having a Christ-centered holiday season. It seems like we start earlier and earlier in the year uh, having our holiday season. It gets longer and longer, and uh, we want to be sure that we keep Christ at the center of it all, and uh, sometimes that can be difficult to do. We can get busy, and we can just try to start getting things checked off the list, and we kind of lose a little bit about what it's all about, uh, and so we want to keep Him as a focus in it all. And uh, so we've started to look at that thought, and uh, this morning I hope you'll take your Bible and open it to the New Testament, to the, God, to the book of 2 Timothy, New Te the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I want to read some verses of Scripture there for you, and I want us to think today on the gift that we must give our children, the gift that we must give our children. You know, boys and girls today... Uh, they they really at a disadvantage because they don't get a Christmas catalog. If you're as old as I am, you look forward to getting a Christmas catalog. You remember that getting it in the mail? Uh, it came in a little brown paper sleeve, and 
Penny's had one, and Sears had one, and Montgomery Ward's had really good toys. They were different than Sears and J.C. Penny. And uh, so you'd get that out, and it'd have uh, some kids in pajamas on the cover, you know, and you'd flip through that thing, and in the back there'd be a big section of toys. And you'd go through there, and you could mark them, you know. I like this one, and I like that one. You'd circle it. Didn't always mean anything, but you could do it, you know. And, and so, uh, but I don't think they do that anymore, do they? No Christmas catalogs. You got to go online. Got to go online to look. Uh, but this time of the year, you know, we think about beginning to do the Christmas shopping and all those kind of things. And but I want you to think this morning with me a little bit about what the gift is that we must give our children. Second Timothy chapter three. And uh, you follow along, I'll read beginning in verse 14. The Bible says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And we'll stop right there, but I want you to think about this with me as we look into God's word about the gift that we must give our children, the gift we must give our grandchildren, and uh, we'll look at it together. Lord, bless the reading of your word today. Thank you for the families who are here in our services. Appreciate the children who are in nursery ministries today or over in our children's church. And Lord, we count it a great privilege that we have today as a local church, uh, Lord, to give uh, gifts unto boys and girls uh, that will make a difference in their lives. And so we are thankful for these families today who've chosen to be here. Uh, bless them, meet needs in their lives, speak to their hearts today. And Lord, may we each realize that the greatest thing we can do in our relationship with you is just to simply be obedient to your word. Uh, to hear truth and receive it and to act upon it and to follow it. And Lord, that's what pleases you. And so we look to you today. May we be obedient people. Somebody may have come to church this morning, but they've never come to Jesus Christ. They do not know what it means to receive him as their personal savior. Perhaps they uh, have been raised religiously. Maybe they've been attending churches throughout their life. But salvation is a personal thing, Lord. And maybe they've never personally met you as their Savior. So we pray today you do that work. God, glorify your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and may we be obedient to you. We pray and ask it all in Jesus' name, and amen. Well, as we were talking about Christmas and gifts, like me, most of you probably can remember uh, some gifts maybe you received as a child uh, that were just very special for you, something maybe you really wanted or you asked for. Uh, you know, as a boy growing up when I did, you know, I, I like G.I. Joe's. Not those little toy plastic ones that are about that big, you know. Some of you guys, you had that size. I had the big 12-inch G.I. Joe. That's the real deal right there, you know. Not a doll. <laughs> He's an action figure, okay? Action figure. Said it right on the box. They came in a box. That's how old that was. Uh, but I had them. I had my first one was, was, a, was plastic blonde hair had painted on blonde hair and had a scar on his cheek. And then I got one that had fuzzy hair. You know, you could rub it and it was fuzzy and he had a fuzzy beard. Had the Kung Fu grip. That's the one that was really could hold on to everything. Uh, but, you know, that. And then uh, Big Jim. How many of you remember Big Jim? You remember him? Not too many of you do. <laughs> He was about like G.I. Joe, but uh, he was a cool figure. Uh, I can remember getting my first uh, video game system, Atari 2600. That was top of the line, and uh, that was a great game, and uh, I enjoyed that. Some of you girls remember, maybe how many of you girls or you mothers of daughters remember the cabbage patch craze? Some of you remember your moms trying to hunt down a cabbage patch doll, and, uh, you know, it came in that little box, and it wasn't very a pretty doll at all, really. It's just fabric with some stuffing in it, but it had a birth certificate in the box. And so that made it official, and they only put out so many, you know, and they were collectible and all that stuff, and moms were running over each other in parking lots and all that stuff to get the Cabbage Patch doll. 
roller skates maybe for girls, I don't know, Barbie dolls, whatever it was. Some gifts, you maybe really wanted them and never got them. Uh, some maybe, uh, you know, uh, some, some of us maybe got much more than we ever could have wanted or needed, you know. Uh, but, but the greatest gifts that we can give and receive are biblical gifts. The greatest gifts that we can give and receive are biblical gifts. They're spiritual truths. You can't give to someone anything that means more than a spiritual truth. Uh, we enjoy giving gifts to the people that we love. It's something we enjoy about the holidays. You know, we, we speak about the scripture when it says it's more blessed to give than receive. And, uh, you know, if we're all honest, sometimes we struggle with that when it comes to tithing and giving to offerings uh, to the church, to missions. But at, at, at birthdays and Christmases, it really is exciting to give, isn't it? Don't you like to do that? To give. And uh, to purchase a gift, to give it, uh, that's an exciting thing. Uh, we enjoy that. But I want you to know today that we can all give, and there is joy in giving the greatest gifts anyone can receive, and that's spiritual gifts. It's biblical truth. There's joy in doing that, and we can do it. It's not based on our monetary resources that we can give these great gifts. You know, here at our church, uh, any day of the week, the gifts of God's Word are being given here. And I hope you'll think about it and pray about the things that go on here at our little church throughout the week. Uh, this morning already at 9.30, we had our building with the Bible hour time for adults. We had our Sunday school hour for our boys and girls. Uh, we know that we have two gospel preaching services where we teach and preach the Word of God every Sunday. Our boys and girls right now are in a church service that's designed especially to convey truth to them at the place they are in their life right now. Uh, our folks in the nursery ministries are working there. There's a Bible lesson that's been planned for them. Uh, a few moments where they're going to try to sow some seed into the hearts of those children. Uh, we know that, uh, that uh, uh, tomorrow evening there's going to be a ladies Bible fellowship where you can come out together as ladies and, and study the Word of God. Uh, you know, uh, Monday through Friday here, biblical principles are used in our preschool and daycare ministries. As we instill into the hearts and lives of children, uh, biblical principles and biblical foundational truths for them. And uh, at, that happens every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Uh, Wednesday nights, uh, our Wednesday mornings, our preschool has a chapel service and we uh, teach and and share the Word of God, building a foundation for them of biblical truths. Uh, we know Wednesday nights we bring in uh, all the people we can to join our Bible clubs, boys and girls, our teen group. We teach the Word of God to families on, uh, on Wednesday nights, Thursday nights right now, South Point College of the Bible's meeting every Thursday night. Uh, we know that Fridays during the uh, summertime, we're out knocking doors, inviting people to Sunday school and church for the bus ministry. Saturdays, uh, we've got King's Turf, and now we're getting ready to start up King's Court. There'll be practices throughout the week with boys and girls. There'll be games on Saturdays. There'll be a time when the Word of God is shared, when it is taught, when it is committed to memory by those that are involved in it. Uh, seven out of seven days of the week. We are involved in giving the greatest gift that can be given. Spiritual truth. Spiritual truth. A, a, a biblical foundation. Truths and principles that we can build a life on and that we can secure our eternity upon. These are the greatest gifts. These, these gifts are the gifts that we need, each of us. And they are the, need, the, the gifts that our children and our grandchildren need more than any other thing that we can give them. This is the gift that we must give our children. I want you just to write these things down. Write down number one, if you will. When we think about the greatest gifts, spiritual truths, biblical truths, we're giving the gift of the greatest knowledge. The greatest knowledge 
that our children, our grandchildren can receive. The greatest knowledge. The greatest knowledge your child and grandchild can receive is not going to come from, from school. And I believe you ought to go to school and you ought to try to learn and do your best. But it's not going to be the greatest knowledge that they, that they receive. It's not even going to come from college, not from science, technology, engineering, uh, math, or now they've added medicine, I think, to that STEM uh, acronym. It's not going to come from those things. Uh, it's not going to be found uh, by doing well on standardized tests, the SAT or the ACT. The, the greatest knowledge that you, you, your children, your grandchildren can receive is the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no question that's the greatest knowledge that they will ever receive. 2 Peter chapter 1, the Bible says beginning in verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of His divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. You ought to go there sometime and mark that passage of Scripture, 2 Peter chapter 1. The world's looking today for peace. The world's looking today for someone to show some grace and have some mercy on them. And the Bible said that grace and peace are multiplied the more and more we get to know who Jesus Christ is through the knowledge of Him. The Bible says that all things, and uh, you don't have to be in Bible college to understand the principle here of, of one of these words, the little word all, uh, and you know the New Testament was originally written in the Greek language, but I want you to know that in the Greek language, the word all means all. Now you know some Greek, right? It means all. It means all, and all means all. And that's all that all ever means is all. And he says, all things that pertain to life are found in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's great. I think everybody here ought to try to be the valedictorian of their school, although I understand now that's different because now they don't have one, they have about ten because they don't want to make anybody offended because someone's number one and somebody's number two. And you ought to try to be. Uh, you ought to go to college if you can, uh, if that's what the Lord wants for your life. You ought to do well at whatever you do. You ought to try to learn and grow and have knowledge, but there's no knowledge like the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing that will prepare you for life than the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the greatest knowledge. I want you to notice here in verse number 15 in our text, notice the idea of the Scriptures. Verse number 15 says, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Circle that word Scriptures. That word Scripture means writings. But it's not just writings, it's holy writings. Holy. The word holy meaning of God. Righteous, pure. And notice it says in verse number 16 again, all Scripture, the Scriptures, all Scriptures. You can give your child or grandchild no greater gift than knowledge of the greatest gift who is Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God's gift is an unspeakable gift. We can give no gift nor receive no gift like the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet today all around the world there are boys and girls who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. They've never heard that verse of Scripture God so loves you, put your name there, that He gave you His only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That as a free gift you can have eternal life and forgiveness of sin. We were visiting, and I told you not long ago, a house here in the community, an apartment near the ball field. We knocked on a door, and a little mom came out, and a little boy, and the little boy said he's never been to church or Sunday school. Never been. We can't give our children a greater gift than the knowledge of the greatest gift, Jesus Christ. And that comes from the Scriptures. 
The Bible says here in our, in our text today, And from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The Scriptures you are giving, when you give your child a Bible, you're giving them the greatest knowledge that they will ever receive. And you know what? I, I know I had a grandfather that never finished high school but he knew the Bible as well as anybody I knew. And he has placed within my heart and life through things he shared with me, things that have changed my life and has settled and established my eternity. We can give nothing better than the gift of the Scriptures. In the Scriptures, we give the gift of the knowledge of the gift of Jesus Christ. When you as a family decide, my family, in our home, dads, we're going to read the Word of God together. We're going to have family devotions. We're going to pray with our children at home. We're going to bring them faithfully to church. You can give your child no greater gift because you're giving them the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every now and then, and it's always very thrilling for me or my wife, somebody will text us, ask us, call us, ask, you know, hey, we want to get a Bible for our child. What kind of Bible can we get for our little boy or little girl? That's a thrilling thing to me because that means that that, that family is thinking about the Word of God and getting that into the hands of their children. We can't give them any greater gift. You know, over time consistently as you place the truths of God's Word into their hearts, they will respond to the Lord Jesus Christ. They will grow and, the, and, 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 and they will have a foundation they can build their lives on. The Scriptures. It's the greatest gift. It gives them the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Abraham Lincoln said, I regard no man as poor who has a godly mother. And we have some mothers who are trying to raise their children on their own and they're doing the best they can. But I want you to know, moms, that the greatest thing you can do is to be sure your children have the gift of the Scriptures. Be sure that they have the influence of the Word of God in their hearts and in their lives. And General MacArthur, General MacArthur, one of the great military leaders of our country's history who stood so strongly and did such a tremendous job during the Second World War, he said, by profession, I am a soldier and I take pride in that fact. But I am prouder, infinitely prouder to be a father. He said, a soldier destroys in order to build. The father only builds, never destroys. The one has the potentiality of death. The other embodies creation and life. And while the hordes of death are mighty, the battalions of life are mightier still. It's my hope that my son, when I'm gone, will remember me not from the battlefield, but from the home. And MacArthur said, I would rather be known as a Christian father than a general, a father who prayed with and read the Bible to his children, than a leader of soldiers. A spiritual education for our children it's the greatest gift we can give them. And it will be our greatest accomplishment as parents. The greatest knowledge. We give them the Scriptures because, as we mentioned, the Scriptures leads to salvation. Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of works, uh, lest any man should boast. It, it is a gift of God. And, and Romans 10.17 said, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Scriptures... Jesus Christ Himself spoke about this in Luke chapter 18. And they brought unto Him also infants, the word there meaning little children, that He would touch them. But when His disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto Him and said, Suffer little children to come unto Me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. And in another place of Scripture, he said, uh, Woe unto you if you hinder children from coming to Him or from growing in their knowledge of Him. He said, It'd be better that someone tied a millstone around your neck and threw you in the middle of the sea. The greatest moment in a parent's life is when their child is born again and saved. Think about that. What, what, greater, what greater news 
could you have your child tell you than to come to you one day and say, hey, Mom, hey, Dad, I, I know I need to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know I need to be saved. I remember I came in from working at the church one day, and Lydia was very small, and she homeschooled her, and I came in, and she was sitting on the couch, middle of the couch, all by herself. That wasn't normal when I came home for lunch. Her feet didn't reach the end of the sofa. You know, I thought she was in trouble. I thought, man, this is bad. And Angie's left me to deal with it instead of just going ahead and doing it. And so she says, tell, tell your dad what, what you did. That sounded bad, didn't it? Tell your dad what you did. I start looking around, see if something's broken, you know. I asked Jesus Christ to save me. I've been saved. So we got to talking a little bit more about it. She told her mom that day, hey, I, I've been saved. Because Angie taught the word of God, included it in our homeschooling, challenged and encouraged her to trust the Lord as her Savior. So I've already done that. She said, when did you do that? And she's, this is, she was about five, not quite maybe five. She said, when I was with Dad at church the other day, she said, we were walking down the hallway, and, and I stopped at the water fountain, and I prayed and asked Jesus to come into my heart and save me. No one was even right there. No one was even, even, even spoke to her. I said, Pastor Tim, how can that happen? Because we, we wanted to give her the greatest gift. And the word of God, the scriptures, led her to be wise unto salvation. It helped her to understand how she could trust Christ and have her sins forgiven. And there is no greater news that you can receive as a parent than to know your child is safe. We use the word saved because it's appropriate, because it's biblical, because it, it means that our child has been saved from an eternity, separated from God forever. Oh, they can give you lots of good news. Today, the big deal is these pregnancy reveals, you know. They can't just tell you. they got to do some spectacular presentation, you know. This kind of, yeah, and then once you know they're pregnant, then you can't know what the baby's going to be until they reveal that somehow, pink or blue or whatever. No, we didn't even want to know. We just wanted to be surprised. We had our baby, you know. But uh, there's no greater news you can get than to know your child has been born again. The greatest gift you can give your child is the greatest knowledge is the scriptures. The greatest knowledge. I want you to notice the greatest wisdom. The greatest wisdom. If you give your child the gift of the word of God, spiritual truths, if you'll give them those gifts, you're giving them the greatest knowledge and you're giving them the greatest wisdom they can ever have. You say, Pastor, what's the difference? Well, wisdom is the proper use of knowledge. Wisdom is the how, not the what. Knowledge is the what. Okay, Knowledge is there. You have it. But wisdom is how and what do I do with what I know. That's wisdom. Wisdom. Verse number 16, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. This is the how we ought to live. The how. And that's important. I want you to notice the scope of Scriptures. Notice the word all again. All Scriptures given by inspiration of God. And notice it's connected with the word profitable. All of it is profitable. All the Bible is profitable. All the Bible. In our Bible college right now, we're studying the Old Testament. We're doing an Old Testament survey. We're just taking each book of the Bible and we're just skimming it. Just trying to get out some of the major truths that we can find there. And, and one of the things that we have to understand today is that the Old Testament is important to us. Because in the lives of the people you read about, and even in the nation of Israel itself, there are lessons and principles that we can learn from them that we need to apply to our life today so that we might live a life that God will bless and that we will know and see His presence and hand upon. All the Scripture 
All the Scripture, the scope of it, the Bible, it's all of it. Not just bits and pieces and parts, but we need it all. Proverbs 30, verse 5 said, Every word of God is pure, and He's a shield to them that put their trust in Him. The scope of the Scriptures, the source. Notice the source of the Bible. We're talking about wisdom. We're talking about how to learn how to live. How to learn how to live. You can't give your child a greater gift than to give them biblical wisdom. Teach them how to live according to the Word of God. My Sunday school, my Bible, building with the Bible hour lesson this morning was uh, from, uh, from the portion of Scripture where it says God's way is perfect. His way is perfect. I want my child to know God's way because it's a perfect way. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. But the way of God is perfect, and I want them to learn God's way. All Scripture is profitable it, it is inspired. Notice the word, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Listen, I want you to understand something about your book today, your Bible. This is not an inspirational book. Sometimes you go in some bookstore and all the religious books, quote unquote, it'll say inspirational. Inspirational books. Listen, I can read a good story about a, a team, a football team that come behind under great uh, diversity and, and, uh, and difficulty and arose in one. And that's inspiring to me. You might, you might have some other story that you read that inspires you, but this book is not inspirational. It is inspired. And that's a difference because the word means that it came from God. It came from God. God is the author of this book. This book came from the Lord. It is inspired. 2 Peter 1.20 Knowing this verse that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God gave His Word to men and men pinned it down, and God has preserved it, and now we have it today. And it is the greatest source of knowledge for our children. It will make them wise unto salvation so their souls are saved and they're secure and they have eternal life. But it will also teach them how to live their life so that they live their life for something that matters so they don't waste it and throw it away on the things that won't matter a million years from now. The Bible is the source of wisdom to teach them how to live. And all the scriptures are profitable for that. All of it. We find, in fact, that we believe the Bible, the fact that it's the final authority for our lives, that's one of the greatest distinctives and doctrines that we have here as a local church. The name of our church is Tri-State Baptist Temple. But I want you to know, the word Baptist does not affiliate us with a denomination of churches. Denominations of churches are churches that believe the same, or uh, they have similar uh, things, or they're associated together. Denominations, I believe denominations are man-made things. We're to be biblical people. We're to be a, a biblical church. The word Baptist refers to the teachings and doctrines of the Word of God. We are Baptistic because we believe the Bible teaches those doctrines. And I've sometimes given you the word Baptist as an acronym. And I use every word, B-A-P-T, I'm not going to go too far, I'll mess it up. Baptist. And I gave you a word for that. Bible believing. B, Bible believing. A, autonomous, meaning we are a sole independent church. We have one head, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we can go right on down the list. The word Baptist simply affiliates us and shows how we believe the Bible. See? And I believe one of the greatest distinctives of us as a church is that we believe the Bible is the greatest and final authority for our lives. There isn't any other place we look to to find a greater authority over our life. We don't look to some group of writings of men or 
a, a group of people who got together and had a convention and took a vote and decided we're going to do this or we're going to do that, whether it agrees with the Word of God or not. Uh, there is no man that has a greater, uh, a greater knowledge than the Word of God has. No man has greater wisdom than we find in the Word of God. Uh, we yield to the Scriptures as the final authority for our lives. Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus is speaking to Satan. Satan's tempting him. But he answered and said, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I'm to live my life word for word through the Word of God. It's to be, it's to be the, the pattern for my life. It's to be the go-to place that decides, yes, this is right for me, or no, this is not right for me and my family. Yes, this is the way I'll live. Yes, this is the way my relationship will be. Yes, this is the kind of parenting we will do. Yes, this is how we're going to invest and spend our life, our time, our talents, our treasures, or not. It's found in the Word of God. We must not have secular mindsets and patterns in our relationships. We must be Bible-believing people who pattern our relationship from the instruction and wisdom of the Word of God. Our children need to know how to rightly divide the Word. They need to know how to take a Bible and rightly divide it and find out in the Word of God what they need for their life. They need to know the Word of God is inspired. You parents need to be sure to teach your children that this is God's Word. It came from God and, and, it, and it, it originated in His heart and mind and that it, it's the ultimate uh, book. It's the highest authority and, and we revere it and it's the Holy Scriptures and we want to live our lives by it. It's what they need for their lives more than anything else. And listen, I'm not opposed to any of these things. But they need the Scriptures more than they need to have fun. Play games, have things and stuff, or have counseling, or anything else. They need the wisdom and knowledge that comes from the Word of God. It's the greatest gift that you can give them. It's the greatest gift. I want you to notice number three, the greatest reason when you give your child the gift of the Scriptures and the truths of God's Word, and you are, are faithful to, to be sure to put their heart under the influence of the Word of God, and, and you not only lead and bring them to church, but it's a part of your home. Listen, it takes both families. It takes both. You can't just come and bring them to church, drop them off, or throw them in a Sunday school class, and then never speak about God, the Word of God, or principles and scriptures, uh, truths. Never do it at home and expect it to, to take in their heart and life. You, you, need, you need both. There has to be both. And, and when we give them those gifts, we're giving them the greatest reason for their life. The greatest reason for their life. So many young people are purposeless. It's worse now than ever from the time that young people get out of high school. It seems like now you keep pushing that age back. 25, 30, how, 35, how far does it have to go before it seems like finally the wheels stop spinning and they get a hold of something and begin to have some direction in their life. It seems like it gets longer and longer that period of time. You know, the gap years... Gap 10 now or whatever it is, it seems like. So many young people are purposeless. Verse 17 said that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. It's in the word of God that your children, your grandchildren will find purpose and meaning for their lives. It's when they have this knowledge of the truths of God's word and when they are taught to use it with wisdom and how to live in the will of God that they will be kept from living wasted lives. That's what will that's ensure that they don't waste their lives. Romans 8.29 says, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Listen, it is undeniably clearly expressed that it is the will of God for every child of God to become like His Son, to grow in likeness to Him. And we, we understand the principle a little bit because sometimes you have to tell your kids, I don't want you hanging out with those kids anymore because you're coming home talking like they do, looking like they do, 
acting like they do, having the attitude they look like. Listen, what I'm saying is uh, that association breeds assimilation. If we're around someone long enough, we wind up becoming like them. But in a positive way, we're to be around the Lord Jesus. We're to be under the influence of His Word. Uh, We're to have that taught and, and, and shared with us in our lives on a consistent basis until eventually we begin to reflect Him in our lives. And there's less and less of us. That's the will of God for every child of God. That's the will of God for your children, moms and dads, your grandchildren, uh, you grandparents that are here today. And listen, we cannot become like Jesus Christ without doing that on purpose. It won't just happen. I want you to notice that we're to grow and we grow by God's word. It's by the word of God we are perfected, we're matured, we're completed. Verse number 17 in our text, that the man of God may be perfect. The word perfect means to grow, to mature, to become complete. Uh, And we find that that all happens because of the word of God. Because of the knowledge there, the wisdom that's there, uh, we can grow and we become like the Lord Jesus. Listen, we'll not grow our children spiritually and help them mature and be complete so they'll be ready for their lives. That will not happen through television, movies, video games, the iPad or cell phones. It won't happen through any of that. And I'm not opposed to them having any of that. But don't leave out what's important. Be sure you put them under the influence of the Word of God. Be sure they have the greatest gift that you can ever give them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, and that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. The word sanctification means an ongoing setting apart of our lives for Jesus Christ. That means that we begin to choose today to live for the Lord and the next day we choose to live for Him and the next day we choose to live for Him until a few days turn into years and years turn into a lifetime. It's an ongoing process and the only way we can continue to do that and that it will get done and that we can grow is by the Word of God. John 17, 17 said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You want your children to be set aside and and, for, and to be for God and for them to give their life to God, then it will happen through the Word of God. The gift of God's Word. We're grow, to grow by it. And, and notice he talks about good works. This is, this is the purpose of God for the life of every child of God. He wants us to be like His Son so that we can do good works. Notice in verse number 17, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Good works. God has made your children so they might know and serve Him. That's why He's made them. Matthew 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Your good works. The world mocks and makes fun of those who want to live on purpose for Jesus Christ. To be like Him. To glorify Him. The world is relentless on those people. But we must teach our children that this is what life is all about. This is it. This is the reason. And we must give them the gifts that are the most important in all the world for all time for their lives. And those are spiritual gifts. Those are biblical truths and principles. There are many gifts we may never be able to give. And there will be a lot we give that ultimately amount to nothing. We all have that experience. Children opening that gift and throwing it in the floor and playing with the paper. Playing with the box, you know. We all have that experience. We all give some gifts that way. But the greatest gifts of all are spiritual gifts. Biblical truths that came from the heart of God, they're for the heart of your children and your grandchildren. And listen, we can all choose both to receive them and to give them. And it could be that today someone's here in this service and you've never received 
the great gift of Jesus Christ for you. I hope, I hope that I hope the Holy Spirit, praying the Holy Spirit of God will help everyone to see that to know we're born again, to know that we have eternal life, to know that we have been forgiven of our sin debt, that, that doesn't come about by just coming to church or joining a program at a church or setting through a class. It comes through personally acknowledging that we have sinned our sin sent the Son of God to the cross. He suffered and died to pay our sin debt. He was buried and rose again. And now that He lives, He lives to give forgiveness. He lives to give the gift of eternal life. And that I personally, every mom, every dad, every little boy, every little girl, they have to ask for themselves forgiveness of sin. They have to receive themselves the gift of eternal life. And there may be somebody here today, you've not yet received these great spiritual truths for your life. And until we receive them, we're in no place to give them. And so if we want to give them, we have to be sure we've received them. The greatest gifts you can give your children, the gift you must give them. They may say, Mom or Dad, I've got to have this. I've got to. If I don't have this, I'm just going to die. Susie's going to get it. Her mom and dad told her they're getting it for her. So, you know, whatever the case. I, I, there's a mom here. They're not here today, but she has a teenage son. And he was, you know, I could tell there was something going on. And, and, uh, and she said, we're not even out of church yet. And he, she had his phone out, and somebody had a motorcycle for sale on Facebook. And, man, he was trying to get mom to look at that. He said, we're not even out of church yet, you know. He's been talking to this guy trying to buy this motorcycle. But the gifts that are the most important, we can choose to give them. And they will mean the most. And that's the truths and things we find in the Word of God. Why don't we pray together? Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Maybe today you've come to church, but you'd say, Pastor, I'm unsure about whether or not I have actually been forgiven, whether I have eternal life. I'm not sure about that. But I'd like to settle that. That's an important thing in my life. I, I want to be sure about this. And, and it, it would be helpful to me if I could just maybe speak to someone about it. Maybe in private. We could just slip away. And if you're a, a, a lady today, a mom or a grandmother, wife, we'll have one of our ladies meet you. And you can find a place you can sit down and say, I want to just be sure about this. What, what, what exactly does the Scripture say? I wonder if there'd be someone today, and no one's looking around, but you'd be honest enough just to slip your hand up and say, I, I would very much like that. Either now or right after the service is over, we'll have someone meet you. You can just be sure you've received that great gift of eternal life. Anyone in the building today, you just want to slip your hand up. Maybe you're a young person, teenager, Whoever you are, whatever season of life you're in, you just slip your hand up and say, I'm not sure, but I want to settle it. I want to be sure. Maybe, maybe it's a, a man today, husband, father, grandfather, whoever you are. Say, I'm not sure if I've trusted Christ. I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. But I want to be sure. Maybe today, maybe today, we've got some parents, some grandparents here today, and the Lord has spoken to your heart. And say, we want to be sure we give the greatest gift. We want to be sure our children, someday, someday we, we're praying, and you ought to be praying, that we'll hear that news. Hey, guess what, Mom, Dad, I got saved today in Sunday school. I got saved today in Bible club. I got saved today in children's church. What a great day. There'll be no greater day than to know that your children are saved and safe in Jesus Christ. May you moms and dads just be committed to giving your children consistently the greatest gift and then demonstrating it to them day by day in your homes and in your relationships and families. May the Lord help us today. We're talking about the greatest gift. Whatever your need is today, if the Lord has spoken to you, we just want to invite you to say yes to Him. Just slip out of your seat, baby. Some of you maybe just want to come and pray. Say, Lord, help us. We want to be the 
we want to be sure we give the greatest gifts. Heavenly Father, we pray now that your will would be done. We just pray, Lord, that you'll, you'll work in every heart and life, every family and home. And Lord, all these boys and girls that are here, God, they deserve the greatest gift. And so, Lord, we pray that we'll continue as a local church to try to provide it for them and moms and dads and families and grandparents. Lord, we'll do all we can so that one by one they'll come to know you as their Savior, have a biblical foundation they can build their lives and maybe even their own homes and families upon. And so, Lord, we commit it all to you, the greatest gift, the gift that children need. Lord, help us to give them your, your word, your knowledge. Jesus Christ. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. Why don't we stand together? We're playing hymn 282 in the hymn book. Some folks have come and prayed and maybe you need to today or respond in some way. We're going to turn and sing the first verse of hymn 282. And you just be obedient as we sing on that first verse. sing the second verse, another verse, verse 2. Man, it's been good this morning, good uh, place to be as we're in church and hearing uh, from the Word of God. I hope you'll uh, just take the Word of the Lord and uh, you'll hide it in your heart and you'll think about it, meditate upon it, and allow God to use it to have an impact on your heart and your life. And so we're thankful for a good message. I hope uh, our choir will be here tonight at 5. We want to continue practicing and our Christmas music. Our children will practice uh, the, their Christmas program at 6 o'clock. So I hope you'll be here tonight. Uh, if you're going to share uh, the gift of God's Word with your family, you've got to show them how important it is. And so uh, make it a priority in your life. And so I'm thankful for the message. You can practice that just by coming back tonight and showing your family that you want to come and hear uh, more from God's Word. So I hope you'll come tonight and uh, hear another great message from the Word of God and uh, just uh, put these truths that God has given us into practice in our own life. But we're thankful for a great day. And uh, glad you've been here and uh, excited about what the Lord is doing in our church. So we'll have a word of prayer and we'll be finished today. Brother Steve, will you pray for us, please?